Monday Night Chat with Wong Chen. Brought to you by the Member of Parliament for Kalanajaya in collaboration with Invo. Welcome back to Monday Night Chat. We have three questions today for Q&A. The first question is about uh, someone read my policy where we're going to abolish GST and we're going to abolish GST but it will be a 24 billion shortfall and that we will somehow pay for this by cutting out corruption worth 24 billion a year. Now the question is how long will this take? My short answer is about two years. In the first three months of parliament after we rule, we will call for, uh, I mean parliament will sit and we have to push through a bill to free up the press because the press, a free press will do the heavy fighting on corruption. We also have to liberalize or make MACC more independent. So those legislative work can be done within three to six months. But the internal systems of, the, uh, of government to cut out corruption will take a bit longer because first, we have to do a, do a proper due diligence audit on all departments. That means it will take six months to a year to complete and then we have to reshuffle the, the, the uh, officers inside uh, and also if found guilty, you have to sack them and then we have to implement a new system anti-bribery system that ISO uh, provides and all those will take about two years all in all but we can see effectively quick results the moment we pass new legislation anti-corruption legislation we should see immediate results on savings from corruption okay now question number two uh, is a question about uh, Dr. Mahade is a cheeky question uh, it says is the question from Mr. E asks is Dr. Mahade the liability has become a liability to the opposition camp. There's no easy answer to this. Uh, what we've seen is Barisan National have taken a U-turn. They used to glorify Dr. Mahade's legacy. And now they're asking about the BMF uh, scandal. They're also asking about the Forex losses. Why do they do this? They do this because they feel, uh, they feel that Dr. Mahade is the biggest threat to them. So the question whether uh, Dr. Mahade is a liability to us, no it is a threat to Barisan National. Uh, for the next six months leading to the possible election in September, I think Dr. Made is one of the big assets that we have in the opposition because, uh, you know, putting aside the question of right or wrong, putting aside those, but looking at it from a simple strategic political alliance purposes, it is a necessity. So, um, you know, I think leading to election, we have to be careful uh, how we address this issue. Okay, the last question is on uh, the North Korean assassination or so-called assassination, alleged assassination at KLIA2. What is my take on it? Now, we have to wait for the full medical report on, on the cause of death, right? Um, but we have, if we can confirm that he was poisoned or it was by foul play, then obviously this is an assassination. In which case, the Malaysian government must move forward quickly to, to re-establish, not re-establish, to renegotiate our relationship with North Korea. Because at the moment, we have almost zero trade with North Korea, but North Korean seems to be able to come into Malaysia quite easily. They were quite lenient towards uh, being here as uh, workers or, or having diplomatic ties with them. We cannot uh, accept the idea that somehow a crime has happened if it's sanctioned by the government of North Korea in on Malaysian soil that we can be nice to them anymore after that. Okay, so that's that I hope answers uh, the three questions this week and we'll move on now to uh, Policy Monday. Well, Policy Monday. This week we're pretty excited about Policy Monday. We have finally uh, printed our police corruption paper. It's called Remedying Police Corruption. It's here, yeah. The history of this uh, paper started sometime in November when we assigned an intern to look into the numbers, to look at uh, numbers from Singapore and also Hong Kong. And uh, it was quite a complicated project. But after the intern left, we sort of left it at the back burner. So uh, we finally picked it up again and polished it up. And now it's, it's been printed on, published on our Facebook and also my, my wongchen.com website on Friday. So I hope that most of you would have uh, picked up a copy. I'll run through basically the executive summary of our paper. 
we start with the idea that public perception of police is bad, right? On corruption is bad. And it comes from two main sources. There are multiple sources, but two main sources. The first source is the fact that people actually experience the corruption firsthand when traffic police stop them and ask for a bribe. Yeah? That's how the, uh, the, the perception of how corrupt the police is comes from their personal experience. Second, it's also a personal experience, but indirectly. Uh, now, if you go anywhere in KL or in Selangor, uh, you see uh, existence of so-called massage parlors, uh, you see karaoke joints, and then you see illegal gambling activities going on. The fact that uh, these activities happen openly in public uh, then secures and also reinforces the idea that the police is corrupt and is, is in cahoots with organized crime. Yeah? So those two are the source of the corruption. So looking at these uh, two sources, we actually propose solutions to tackle them head on. Now the bigger problem is of course organized crime. Traffic, uh, traffic bribery is relatively small in quantum compared to organized crime. Yeah? So the way to tackle this is we looked at the Singapore experience and also the Hong Kong experience. And the key is this, there are two basic things that need to be done. You can do multiple things as well. But the two most important is, is, uh, is one, you have to pay police better. That is essential. The Hong Kong experience and the Singapore experience tells you completely why it needs to be done. Please read the paper because the paper breaks down uh, the pay scale that we suggest. The entire pay scale to improve the pay of low rank police and high rank police is 2.55 billion, the cost of it, additional cost to the public or to the government. That represents less than 1% of the entire government budget, right? So our paper suggests 2.55 billion increase in increment to the police. Now, let me give another example that's in the paper that might just shock you. For instance, our IGP is being paid about 15, 16,000 a month. Yeah, that's his base pay per month. The IGP equivalent in Hong Kong is being paid 160,000 a month. That's 10 times in, in, in pay. Yeah? So you can imagine uh, why we need to scale up the uh, numbers or, or the pay of our senior police officers as well as our junior police officers. Yeah? The second point that needs reform is the idea that the MACC should be completely independent. Yeah? So we know that the MACC actually gets its budget from the Prime Minister and it appears that you know, uh, the sacking and removal of top leaders in MACC can be done by the Prime Minister as well. So we need to remove those powers. In addition to that, we need a special division in MACC that actually looks into police corruption. So basically what we propose is a carrot and stick strategy. You cannot just have the stick, you cannot just give the carrot, you need the carrot and the stick. The carrot being pay increase, fair reasonable pay increase, the stick being a much stronger independent body focusing on corruption within the police sector. Remember this paper is not a condemnation of the police, we're here to give them solid uh, recommendations that they can implement with the right political will from the government of Malaysia. Lastly, if you cannot implement these two things, the very least you can do is tackle the issue about traffic offences bribery or corruption during traffic offences crime. Yeah? Everybody has been stopped by police. Most people would have experienced some not nice things that the, the police offered to settle out of court. Yeah? So called settle out of court. So to do that, to, to eliminate this practice, it's very simple. You just insist that every traffic police officer carries a body camera. That body camera will record the interaction between the, the driver and the police and that should eliminate 90-95% of the corrupt practices at traffic offences level. And that will cost only merely to, to, uh, to equip 6,000 traffic police officers a mere 12 million a year. So, this policy paper, like most of our policy papers, we don't just condemn and talk or philosophize about things. We actually give you an actual budget that it, it is achievable to reduce the, the level of perception of police corruption to a more uh, fair and equitable level so that people actually start to celebrate the police doing their job, which is to protect us, rather than continuously condemn the police force.
Yeah? In Subang Jaya, we are very, very proud to have the cooperation of police down here. They do a fabulous job. And that has become the major inspiration for me to write this paper, to celebrate and to, to offer remedies to better the perception and image of the police force. So that's it for Policy Monday. Thank you. Hi everybody, this is your Community Officer Abigail reporting for duty. I am here to bring you the latest news from Klana Jaya. First on the list is our visit to Kakwan's house where we went over the parliamentary questions with her office and uh, came out successful. We managed to get it done before the deadline and now it has been sent and all we have to do is just wait for the parliamentary session to hear the replies by our ministers. So that is one job done. Uh, the second thing on the list is the third terang session that took place. Boss was interviewed by Tuan Said and he spoke on three particular areas. BRIM, TPP and the asset declaration issue. If you have, if you have no idea what I'm talking about and no idea what this third, third starang session is about, feel free to go to his Facebook page and check out the video. It is uploaded on our Facebook page. So do check it out so that you'll be able to get a grasp on what boss thinks of those three areas. Next on the list is the PTPTN forum that took place on Friday night. Our staff got, you know, kind of like a leave of absence, so we didn't have to go there, but the interns were forced to go to it. I am so happy. And uh, they said that they really enjoyed themselves. It was a really informative and insightful event, um, and I'm glad that they took back a lot more information uh, about the issue. Finally, it is the RT USJ 12 event that took place during the weekend. Dato Asman, you are so nice to take care of boss when he was around. Thank you so much for that. He really enjoyed the food and the fun with all you residents. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for everything. Take care, people. Follow us and subscribe.